Singer 111 W151. Uh, this is a uh, something I got off the internet. It's not for the machine exactly. It is a class 111. It shows varieties 152, 3, 4, and 5. Uh, I've found it to be accurate for this machine as I have used it um, to uh, set such things as needle bar height and uh, get appropriate parts ordered for the machine. So you'll get that. So welting foot. This is a zipper foot. I've only got one bobbin with this machine and uh, I'll also send uh, these needles. These are a size 22. Uh, this is for uh, rather large thread. Um, I'm currently running um, I believe I'm running uh, a 105. I think I'm running a 105 thread in this currently. And this machine takes a, a 135.17 which is a standard in, in walking foot machines. Uh, this machine has been uh, cleaned up. It's uh, been serviced and oiled. I have set the uh, timing, the needle bar height, uh, as well as a few other um, settings as I uh, ran through the, the book as it was instructing. I um, had to replace a few parts in here. There was a spring on the uh, stitch length adjustment that needed to be replaced. Um, you can see underneath the machine uh, right here is where I uh, replaced the part this machine is is clean um, it's greased on the helical gears everything else is oiled this machine is in top uh, top condition ready to go uh, the belts in good shape parts for this machine are readily available one of the nice things about the 111 is this is the machine that everybody else copied. Um, a lot of the machines that you can buy today that are made overseas still use the 111 in their part number. Taxo, 111, um, etc. Uh, uh, some say that the uh, Conso 206 is, is copied off of this. So this is a good old machine, so good everybody copied it. This machine will uh, adjust stitch length from 32 to 5 per inch. Um, it's very easy to set using this switch, uh, excuse me, button, and uh, you'll read the uh, numbers through through this hole here and you can set that and I'll, I'll kind of demonstrate that a little bit. This machine does not have reverse and I'll show some of the ways that you can um, lock your stitches without reverse. This machine, uh, right now the foot's up, it has this, this uh, foot lift back here. It also has a, a knee lift it's very handy. Another one of the features of this machine is the uh, uh, drop-in bobbin. Makes it very handy. Uh, according to the manual, now I've, I've seen people do it both ways on this as far as which direction the uh, thread goes. I've seen people run it, the thread coming off uh, clockwise. However, the book instructs counterclockwise so you get a number six if you look at it that way rather than if you put it in the other way you can get a nine so anyway uh, counterclockwise come come this way off the bottom put that down you just advance your machine the thread comes around grabs and you just uh, use something to pull it up. 
Okay, close that up. Now we're ready to sew. Okay, and now we're gonna sew at uh, five stitches per inch. Now, one of the things you'll notice here is when I started, I had all these loose layers, and because this has a, a needle feed, it helps hold all those layers together evenly. Uh, the, the needle actually pushes the material through along with the feed dogs underneath. They work in unison, uh, unison feed. So let me uh, uh, set the stitch length down to uh, a smaller stitch length. See that the uh, stitch length adjusts very well. One of the things that make this machine um, so popular and uh, that has st stood the test of time is the, is the needle feed. And I'm tr going to try to give you a good shot of just what that is. Um, now I will. Uh, Set the stitch to uh, the fewest stitches per inch that I can to try to accentuate the movement. Now as I run it through with my hand, you can see that as the needle enters the fabric, it will then begin to move to the back of the machine with the feed dogs in unison to help move the material back. Basically that pins the material together so that if you have a lot of layers it'll help hold those together. So that's what unison feeds feed is about. Now I'll uh, do it in uh, faster. So it's a very effective feed mechanism and uh, really what makes this machine shine. I'll show just briefly a couple of methods for uh, working around a machine that doesn't have reverse. First off, um, you don't need to use reverse near as much as what I see a lot of people use it. For instance, um, many times when you sew to, to the end of something, uh, later in the construction process, you will then sew across it, in which case you won't need a reverse at the end of such a stitch. But when you do need um, to uh, put a lock stitch in, one method is to start in the opposite direction that you're going to go. So in that case, you would sew two or three stitches, and with the needle down, you'll stop and turn around, and continue to sew in the direction that you intend. And so now, that is locked at the end there. And you can do two or three stitches, it's, it's whatever you prefer. Now another way um, to do it, um, I'll just go to the end here and say that's where you want to stop. You'll, you'll bring your needle up, you lift the foot, just move your material um, a few stitches and then sew forward again. To, you know, three or so stitches.
and now you have it locked on this end and it's locked on this end as well there um, is another method uh, that people will use and that is to start sewing uh, you'll hold you'll hold the foot up slightly and you'll sew just a couple of stitches without uh, letting the the advance mechanisms move your fabric forward and then you let, let your foot and continue so um, let's see if we can get a shot of that now that is uh, not noticeable at all on the top and on the bottom what you get is just a little bit of a knot so it's a it's a pretty good method so there's three methods and the fourth method um, okay now fourth method now here I just stopped sewing and what you'll do is um, you'll pull on one thread. Now you can do this uh, top or bottom. You probably want to do it on the bottom, so I want to do that. So uh, you just pull on this thread and you'll see the top thread pull through. You just want to grab that top thread that you pulled through. You don't want to rip it, of course. Now, once you have both threads on the same side, it's just a simple matter of uh, an overhand knot. basically your your hand tying your uh, your threads off now this is uh, perhaps the most tedious method but it gives a, a very finished look on this side so there's disadvantages and advantages to each. So there's four methods of tying off stitches with a <coughs> excuse me with a machine that doesn't have reverse. This machine can sew uh, rather fine material and also rather heavy material. Now this is only four layers of denim. Uh, it's fairly thick denim, and there's thicker, but there's a lot thinner also. Um, you won't sew much more than that probably but uh, just for demonstration we'll go with eight and that fits under the foot handily try not to go too fast when you sew that many layers of material it really heats the needle up And you can see even with the clutch motor that you have a, a fair degree of control even at a at a long stitch like that. Now if I uh, set the stitch try not to cut my thread over here. Okay. Now set the stitch to the uh, shortest. Shortest stitch. You really have fine control over how fast it feeds. Now I'm kind of smoking my needle there a little bit. Slow down.
But as you can see, this machine will easily sew eight layers of denim, and and you could fit a few more layers under there. Basically, anything that you can fit under a foot, it'll uh, sew.